Okay. So according to the CDC in the year 2017 to 2018, 42.4% of the American population suffers from obesity. While obesity can be caused by certain medical conditions, most of the time it is the result of a poor diet. Obesity can lead to other medical conditions such as type 2 diabetes, heart attack, stroke, premature heart disease, and possibly nerve damage. On the other hand, um, 10 out of every 100 girls in the United States suffers from some sort of eating disorder in their teen and or young adult years. And in addition to that, according to the Medical News Today article, What Are the Symptoms of a Vitamin D Deficiency?, states that in 2020, 50% of the worldwide population had insufficient levels of vitamin D. I believe that all students should be required to take a nutrition class in high school because if students were more aware of the science of food and nutrition and the myths presented by diet culture and social media, then the prevalence of issues like obesity, vitamin deficiency, and eating disorders would decrease. In order to implement this, we need to sign a petition to have uh, nutrition classes uh, mandatory in high schools nationwide. Most high school and college students do not have good diets to begin with. This does not necessarily mean only that their diets could cause weight gain or weight loss, but that they could also lead to vitamin deficiencies because fast food is oftentimes lacking in essential vitamins and nutrients. Even something like the vegan diet, which is inherently healthy, uh, could lead to deficiencies in vitamins such as vitamin D, B12, and iron, which are all essential to the body. Um, and being educated on nutrition will be able to help people understand this and make better choices. So my experience, I am a pre-health student. I am also an athlete. I did martial arts, dance, and I am currently doing weightlifting. Um, I myself suffered from disordered eating for about four years um, in my during high school. Um, I also suffer from multiple vitamin deficiencies and both from medical conditions and diet. And so I have done extensive research on certain um, vitamin deficiencies as well as on nutrition and how to eat intuitively. And today I will discuss issues that are caused by a lack of education and misinformation on nutrition and different diets, how this can be solved with something as simple as requiring a nutrition class and the best way to implement that nutrition class. Okay, so obesity and eating disorders exist due to a lack of education on food intake, calories, and misinformation on diet culture. Obesity is extremely common in the US population and can be caused by medical issues, but like I said, most of the time it is just caused by poor dietary choices. Um, it is known that a lot of college students that move away from their families and into their dorms do not have ideal diets. In fact, there is even a saying known as the freshman 15, which is the idea that freshmen in college gain 15 pounds their first year because of unhealthy habits they've developed being away from home. Eating disorders are also becoming more prevalent in today's youth. In fact, according to the American Association of Adolescent Psychiatry, uh, disordered eating related to stress, poor nutritional habits, and food fads are re relatively common problems for youth. And that brings me to my next point. Mo most of what we hear about diet culture is incorrect. For example, the saying, don't eat past 8 p.m. or you'll gain weight is completely false. Um, it doesn't matter what time that you, ate, that you eat at. What matters is how much you eat throughout the day. Um, and the amount of calories that you'll need to lose or gain weight is different because um, it's based on your height, current weight, and activity level. So it's different than everybody else's. Detox teas, remedies, and quick 30-day weight loss um, plans are fake solutions used to take your money without giving true results. These are just a few of the things that are prevalent in social media diet culture. Eating disorders such as anorexia and bulimia um, can very well stem from those diet cultures presented on social media. I personally fell victim to this when I was 14. I decided that I wanted to model. And as a young martial artist, I was by no means overweight, but I was more muscular than most of the guys and girls my age. So that was deemed unattractive in the modeling industry. And this sucked me into a four year battle with an eating disorder while I struggled to learn the truth about nutrition and repair my relationship with food. 
um, certain vitamins like vitamin B12, uh, D3 and iron are essential to the body and are not found in all food products. Deficiencies in these vitamins can have long-term consequences, consequences, which can eventually be dangerous. Certain vitamin deficiencies, such as iron and B12, can actually lead to other medical conditions, such as anemia. Anemia is the medical condition where you have a decreased number of red blood cells, um, which can then affect your um, oxygen uptake. Um, these uh, vitamin deficiencies also have ambiguous symptoms, which make them very hard to identify and or diagnose. The vegan diet, while extremely healthy, is lacking in meat and dairy products, which are the main sources of vitamins and minerals, such, of, such as vitamin D3, vitamin B12, and iron. These vitamins are essential to the body, and while there are supplements and fortified vegan foods that are available, unless you know that you are lacking them in your diet, you won't be looking for them. So here is a list of the different um, symptoms that you can see in each of these deficiencies. The one that is common among all three um, is depression. It's one of the ones common among all three. And actually a paper published in the Annals of General Psychiatry in June, 2020, vitamin D deficiency mediates the relationship between dietary patterns and depression. A case control study by Feruze Razi et al concluded that vitamin D deficiency mediates the relationship between unhealthy dietary patterns and depression. Okay, and so fast food is extremely lacking in essential nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. And um, certain diets like the vegan and ketogenic diets can have unforeseen consequences if you are not properly educated before starting them. Like I said before, uh, the vegan diet is lacking in meat and dairy products, and that can cause deficiencies in certain vitamins that are only pr uh, present naturally in meat and dairy products. And so people who are vegan may need to supplement these vitamins um, in order to prevent having issues because of those deficiencies uh, later on down the road. A ketogenic diet um, is also one that under extreme circumstances is not good for your body. Um, the blood and brain use carbohydrates as their main source of energy. And during the ketogenic diet, they must compensate for this by producing something called ketone bodies. Well, ketone bodies raise the pH, um, lower the pH of your blood, which can actually be dangerous. And in an article published by the NCBI, keto, by the NCBI ketogenic diet induced severe keto, ketoacidosis in a lactating woman, a case report and review of literature, a healthy non-diabetic woman was hospitalized with a dangerously low blood pH after a long-term ketogenic diet. All these issues could be addressed if people in general had a much better understanding of what they are eating and why they are eating it. So the best way to solve these issues is to make nutrition classes mandatory in high school. By implementing a nutrition class in high school, that means all students would have to take it before they graduate. Requiring a nutrition class in high school could prevent more teens from developing unhealthy lifestyles once they leave home. This would also reduce the percentage of obesity that is not induced due to certain medical conditions. Students who know more about their basic caloric needs per day and how to eat intuitively are less likely to gain or lose weight very quickly or develop eating disorders. Um, knowing how many calories a day you need based on height, build, and activity level will prevent people from blindly guessing um, how much they need to eat per day. It will also help te less teens fall into the traps they see online promoting um, detox and weight loss. In addition to that, it will help reduce the amount of people who suffer from vitamin deficiencies because of their diets. A nutrition class would be able to educate students on the necessary vitamins and minerals and which foods they are naturally available in and where to find alternatives for them, as well as how many calories they need a day um, for their basic height, weight, and activity levels. A nutrition class is a reasonable solution to the large issues this population suffers um, due to misinformation on diet culture and um, food and nutrition. So imagine this, 
more people are now aware as they go into college of what a healthy lifestyle looks like and conditions like type two diabetes and heart attack are reduced in people um, who are in their 30s and 40s. Less teens and young adults suffer from disordered eating and instead people have a healthy relationship with food and understand and respect their bodies. Those who are not suffering from obesity or malnutrition due to a medical condition understand what they can do to remedy it. And those who are suffering from those things due to a medical condition um, understand that it's not a result due to their lifestyle and can seek treatment for it. For this to become a reality, we must take steps for it to get there. I believe that in order to make teens and young adults more aware of what they should be consuming and why, nutrition classes should be mandatory for every high school student. Today I talked about why nutrition classes are needed, such as the prevalence of obesity, obesity-related disease, eating disorders, and vitamin slash mineral deficiencies, how a nutrition class could solve these problems, and what the future would look like if we implemented these nutrition classes. In order to make this a reality, one step that we can take is to sign this petition, which will make food growing, cooking, and nutrition at the core of school curriculum. With nutrition being something students are educated on, there would be a lot less prevalence of obesity and obesity-related diseases. And this is uh, the petition.